Well. So our topic of the week are the 30 second maximal sprints. Now we talk about this quite a lot because we find that this protocol is real bang for your buck, getting the best adaptations in the shortest amount of time. Now our box has got a real love-hate relationship with 30 second maximal sprints because it hurts, really really hurts and you can't find a comfortable position to sit in or lay in or whatever in between reps and it really pushes your body to the max. But on the other hand, they see massive benefits to their performance. In our recent combat conditioning conference, Alan Ruddock explains the physiology behind these sprints, you know, what it's actually doing to the body and why it's so beneficial as well. So take a look. So what is it? Well, we define sprint intervals and sprints specifically as short duration maximum efforts. For us, it doesn't really matter you know, if you're running at a particular speed or 100% of your actual sprint running speed, what matters is effort that you're putting in. For us, it's short duration, maximum efforts. And because we're focused on effort, it means that anyone can do our programs. It doesn't matter how fast you can run. As long as you can put in max effort, which everyone should be able to do, anyone can do our programs. When we say short duration, what do we mean? Well, a sprint interval for us is defined as anything lasting up to 30 seconds. And we found that anything that's greater than 30 seconds tends to compromise the quality of the session because it, it decreases the average, the mean average speed that you can produce over an interval. And that has an interaction with the, the physiological responses that you'll be eliciting by doing that type of sprint. So anything up to 30 seconds we deem to be short duration. Anything above that, and you, you tending to get away from a sprint interval. So recovery time or rest time is also crucial, but what should you be doing during recovery? Well, in the previous slide, I said that these are maximum efforts. Okay, so in the first two minutes of recovery, you shouldn't be able to do anything because what you've done previously is a 30 second flat out max effort. So if I'm being honest, you should be writhing in pain. And if you're not writhing in pain, you haven't put max effort in for 30 seconds. Okay. There should not be a position that is comfortable. You should be on the floor, breathing heavy and thinking what the hell has just gone on. And then in the remaining one minute of recovery, you should then start focusing on your breathing, walking around, clearing your head, and focusing it on the next interval. So our sprints and recovery times are best illustrated in this video of the champ, Kel Brook. <laughs> So that was the effect of one of our sprint interval trainings on Kel Brook. Um, as you can see, there is no position that looks comfortable. You know, he's put maximum effort in in all of his repetitions. And um, the session that we're going to give to you today in this presentation is the same session that did that to Kel Brook. So why do we use sprint intervals? You know, what what is it that's so special? Why have we chosen sprint interval trainings to kickstart your conditioning? Well, there are a few key questions that we always try and ask ourselves, and that's for me as a physiologist that who's interested in how the body responds and adapts to exercise, I'm interested in what does sprint intervals do to the body during a training session? And then what does it do if we keep repeating these sessions? What does it do over a longer period of time if we keep doing it? Does it induce favorable adaptations that contribute to boxing performance? Or is it just, you know, getting us fit in a random way just a little bit? You know, and, and how long do these adaptations take to have a meaningful performance improvement? You know, all of these questions we've answered for you, and they're pretty difficult questions to ask. And there isn't really a clear answer for any one of them. Um, so we, 
kind of integrating several different answers from several different different areas and we've tried and tested these methods and these are the reasons why we use sprint intervals. So like all our training systems and our training sessions, we start with the scientific research. What does the research say and what does it say about sprint interval training? So we know that it places a large demand on our muscle cells to produce energy. And when it does so, it causes strain and that strain is directly related to adaptation. So our muscle cells are being depleted of energy and that's causing signals for adaptation. So when we do this time and time again over rep to rep and session to session, it improves our ability to utilize oxygen. And this improved ability to utilize oxygen doesn't just help conditioning, it also helps strength training as well and it also helps boxing specific training. We've seen beneficial adaptations occur in as little as six sessions. We prefer nine because we've seen consistent adaptations over nine sessions, but we know the research has also observed beneficial adaptations within six sessions. But like I say, nine sessions provides a bit more of a consistent adaptation profile. Our exercise of the week, it's a 30 second flat out max effort sprint. Now, you might have seen in the, the videos that we do, you might have seen uh, on, you know, on the internet elsewhere, uh, you might have even seen these in your gym and be thinking, what the, the hell are these banana shaped treadmills? These are non motorized treadmills, which means that you drive them yourself. So you push back on the belt, and if you want to do that now, Tom, we just heard it to trip. So you drive the belt back, and, and that will allow you then to, to run on the treadmill. So they differ from normal treadmills that you might have seen, which are motorized, these are more so driving the belt and you're just putting your foot on the, on the treadmill belt and, and running along with it. Now these are, these are really good because they allow our boxers to run at max speeds. Um, they are curved, which means it makes it a little bit like running up a never ending hill. Um, and the, the, you know, the things that we do on here um, you know, are pretty demanding, high intensity efforts, and you know, they've, they've now got the, the nickname of the devil's hamster wheel. So they're they pretty horrible. In a second, we're going to get Tommy to demonstrate what we're looking for in our 30 second all our effort intervals. Now, the key to these intervals is that you attack them from the very start. You know, often you'll get people who try and pace it all the way through. That's, that's not what we want from, from this session, from these, from these repetitions. We want max effort straight from the, from the start. Um, and want to try and maintain your speed as much as possible. Um, there is a, a, a real physiological reason behind that. It's not just because I want to you know, kill you. It's because that what you need to do is, is really change the energy state of the, of the cell to ramp up the cell signaling responses, which then cause the adaptation. So when you're sprinting at maximum speed, you're recruiting a lot of muscle. And when you're recruiting a lot of muscle, you are, you are changing um, the nervous impulses that, that you're getting and when you do that you're producing some substances that are then important for, for changing the way that your, your, your cell adapts to, to exercise so it, you know, it causes, it causes a, an adaptation in that respect. Um, it's also important because when you're, you're running at high intensity you're also using a lot of energy and when you're using a lot of energy at the cell level, you know, you create a lot of different compounds and they also feed, feed into cell signaling responses. So if you can run as fast as, you, as possible at the, at the very start, then you're maximizing the responses from, from these signals. So flat out from the very start and then just hold on. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit about quality, but it, it's more about how much force you can actually put down in the first, first 10 seconds rather than you know, trying to pace it and, and, and try to just get through the session. So as long as you can attack it and give you know, maximum effort, then you know, you're giving your cells the, the maximum opportunity to do you know, its job and, and, and adapt. So Tommy's now going to do a max effort sprint just to, to give you an indication of, of, of how these sessions work. You know, he's going to attack it from the very beginning and then you're just going to, going to hold on and try and keep his form. Right, ready? Yep. All right, here we go. We've got time.
So Tommy, you're rested now and ready for your next set. Ready for my next one, yeah. On the what bike? On the what bike. <laughs> so another key piece of equipment that we use sometimes when we need to change things up, um, you know, whether you know, someone's might have a little bit of a niggle or whether we just want to deload, you know, to just take a little, you know, add a little bit of variation into, into training, is we use the, the what bike. Um, you'll probably see these in, in gyms around the world and around the country. Absolutely fantastic piece of equipment. Um, and we can also do 30 second max sprints on here. Um, so the way that you want to set this up is that there's really you know, one key thing that you've got to remember, uh, and that's knee angle. Um, so Tommy, if you can just angle your foot down to the bottom dead centre there. What we're looking for is just a tiny bit of knee bend here. So we've got almost full extension, but we've got a tiny little bit of knee bend. So we don't want your foot you know, to be completely straight at, at, at the bottom, at the bottom dead centre. We just want a tiny little, little angle there. And if you ever reach to the handlebars, Tommy, usually this, this part is all about comfort, how it feels, but you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be too far forward on here. Um, so you can just this out. You know, Tommy might feel it stretching a little bit there. Um, so you can adjust that and then same, same with the handlebar height as well. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want that to be too low that you're reaching down because that might then actually cramp, cramp up, you know, your your hips and not being able to apply force all the way through. Around the other side, you have the resistance setting. Um, so this is wind resistance, or air resistance, even not wind resistance. Um, so one being really easy. 10 being really hard. Um, now, you might think that if you put the resistance up to 10 at maximum level, you might think that if you then try and cycle as hard as you can, you'll be able to hit the highest power up possible. But our muscles don't work like that. They work, you know, um, based upon force velocity relationships and length tension relationships. And, and there is actually an optimum resistance. So for me, that is about eight about eight and a half, nine, not 10. So I found that to be ideal resistance for me to be able to do that combination of, of leg speed and RPM 
against the resistance and that gives me maximum maximum power when I'm doing my maximum reps. So the same physiological principles apply to this, this session whether you're on the watt bike or whether you're on the on the curb treadmill or on the treadmill or on the road. You, know, you want to attack it from, from the very very beginning and give max effort and then just hang on um, towards the end. So Tom, I think Tom is going to give us a bit of a demonstration on this as well. So I'm going to take seconds, we're going to go 30 seconds flat out. Um, so there are a few things that you just need to change in here and we're just going to whiz through these just to get started. So initialising the same, the same time period again, so we're going to record power at 7 seconds at 17 seconds a minute. 20 yeah. seconds. Okay, so we're going to do power here. Alright. Already? Yeah. Alright. Three, two, one, go. Go for it, man. So this is where our athletes usually end their session. Either they are laid out on the on the treadmill or they come to this window. It's a short walk, maybe about six or seven meters from, from our, our room where the curve treadmills are to the recovery window, which is where Callum and now Tommy is trying to recover from two 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 now, if this isn't enough, we do have the recovery corridor, which has got windows that we can open pretty much all the way along. So I think I think we're gonna we're gonna take Tommy there and uh, and end the uh, the video. So thanks very much, everyone, for for watching. Uh, please, you know, like this video, share it, uh, and if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you.